So I'm sitting here at the uh, restaurant 11 in uh, Lisbon, together with Charles Metcalf. And I think I can perhaps call Charles Metcalf the guru of Portuguese wine, without too much exaggerating. I've, I've been very lucky. One of the things you said was that many of the winemakers are, well, it's a new generation with a lot of technology, savvy and uh, analogists which know uh, in detail the chemistry. Do you think Portugal is a bit of a new world wine country? Hmm. Is Portugal a new world? That's an interesting question. Um, I think it's, it's, it's new world in the sense that they have improved hugely, even over the last 10 years. Um, they've got these young winemakers, they've rediscovered some old varieties. There was one in my tasting this evening, an old variety from, from near the mountains of the Serra de Estrela, called Fonte Cal. Portuguese variety, most people in Portugal have never heard of the Fonte Cal. It's a white variety, makes very steely mineral wines. And, you know, it's more been a process of rediscovery than actually things which are completely new. Mm. But I think, you, you know, it's, it's a combination of Portugal having benefited from the investment that the European Union has put into Portugal yeah. in things like infrastructure of roads, motorways. Um, that's, that's been an enormous benefit to Portugal. But they've come up with wonderful things. It's not so much new world, it's more rediscovery of the old world. Mm. You mentioned that some of the, or, or that there is a whole um, profusion of interesting old traditional grape varieties. And there is this, this debate in Portugal um, about is this something that you can sell internationally or should you instead brand the wines uh, under uh, other names you have uh, great varieties like, like Anton Bage or what you mentioned previously Afrocheiro and things which most non-Portuguese find almost impossible to pronounce. How do you think I the think, Portuguese yeah. would succeed in exporting their wines? I think there's room for a few Portuguese grape names, perhaps. Arintu, maybe, because it's quite a simple name. Toriga Nacional, because it's, it's already beginning to make a bit of a reputation. Maybe one or two others, but I think, actually, brands are the way forward. Mm. Now, a brand doesn't have to be a big, sort of dangerous, ugly thing. A brand can just be a producer who makes wonderful wine. Mm. It could be a, sim a small producer mm. making fantastic wine, very typical of the place where he makes it, mm. or she makes it in mm. Portugal. There are a lot of women winemakers. Mm. But I think that's what's going to carry Portugal's wines forward. Brands, sometimes big brands, sometimes small, fine brands. I mean, thinking of the Douro Valley, um, wines such as Quinta do Crashtu, it's a single estate. They've done terribly well, Quinta de la Rosa. They're really pushing their brand, they're making better and better wines. And, you know, you can have big brands as well. Periquita is a brand that has been around for, ooh, 30 years. José Maria de Fonseca, one of the big merchant companies. Mm. Matheus is a brand. Mm. You know, it's a brand for slightly fizzy, sparkling pink wines. Mm. And I think in this modern age of branding, brands are probably the way to go rather than grape varieties. Mm. There are so many different names for the grape varieties. I think if people can find a brand they like, and follow that, that's possibly a better way forward. Now, there, for, for the person who wants to learn more about Portuguese wine, there is one thing we need to say, I think, that there, there is an excellent book about Portuguese wines. You're very kind, Per, thank you. You happen to have written together with your wife. And my wife, indeed, yes. And what's it called? It's called The Wine and Food Lover's Guide to Portugal. So I, it's more than a wine it's book? It's more than a wine book. Um, the Portuguese wanted me to do them a new wine book about their wines and it seemed to be more interesting to write about Portuguese wine and Portuguese food, the places to visit in Portugal and to give recommendations of restaurants at which to eat and hotels to stay. Mm. 
and so we've written what is essentially a travel guide for people who like eating and drinking. Mm. Well, I, um, I can unashamedly say that I think it's a very good book. We travel a lot in Portugal ourselves yeah. and we organize wine tours to Portugal and we use your book when we plan our trip. So good, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. It's a very good source for wine producers and uh, gastronomy and food and restaurants. Yeah, I, it's got a lot of detail in it. I mean, we put a lot of background research work in it and as far as as far as hotel and restaurant prices, you know, things go out of date. But, yeah, you know, we, we, we had friends of ours here in Portugal endlessly ringing up Portuguese restaurants to find out how much a three-course meal would cost mm. with a glass of wine. Mm. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly good indication. Prices may have gone up by, say, five euros since we last reprinted the book, which was in 2008. But I hope they're not too far out. At least it gives an indication of which restaurants are expensive and which are good value. And the same for hotels. Charles, Charles Metcalf, thank you very much for talking to us about uh, Portugal, Portuguese wine, tonight. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.